Croissant. Welcome to the Canon Yard podcast. This is episode seven and my name is Lynn and I'm coming to you from Cardiff in Wales in the UK and this is a knitting and crochet and fibre based fortnightly podcast. If you are a new viewer thank you so much for stopping by and if you are a returning viewer hey thank you so much for coming back. Hopefully I have a little bit more energy than the last podcast. I am a lot better now so uh, yes thank you for coming back. Uh, but to everyone I really appreciate you spending some time with me today so I hope you have a cuppa and your knitting or your crochet project and you will just take a little time to chill and see what I've been up to over these last couple of weeks. Um, this podcast runs on the usual format of finished objects, works in progress, stash acquisitions or in my case stash rediscoveries as I am trying to work through my stash this year and if I say so myself I am not doing too bad at all. Um, I had a couple of acquisitions at Wonderwall Wales this year, a couple of acquisitions at um, EYF this year, but I've been really good. I have used those um, purchases mostly, or they are allocated, but I have been trying to dredge through some of my stash and um, yeah, stash busting is the way to go. I've been really pleased with the stuff that I've made from, from stuff I've even forgotten I'd had. We all know we've got that box or that bag at the bottom of somewhere. But if you look through and you can match it up with the perfect project, happy, happy days. Anyway, I digress already. So, uh, finished objects this week. Well, um, I have a finished object, but I don't have it with me. So I'm just going to put up a little picture here of it. It is a crochet rug that I made for my daughter a few years ago. Um, but it's had quite a bit of wear and tear and it has uh, it needs to be repaired so I repaired the center panel and added a few rounds of um, fabric to it and it's uh, it's gone back to university with her we took her not her but all her stuff to her new university house so it is not with me but I just wanted to show you what I've been up to and it is a rug made from old clothes of hers clothes and um, old duvet covers linens curtains that sort of thing uh, so in I've done a, another um, vlog or tutorial so if you have a look at that on my YouTube channel you can see how I made it um, but it's a really great way of using up bits and bobs of fabrics if you're like me you hoard loads and loads of stuff that you probably will never make into anything will never sew into anything but it's a great way of using up those bits and bobs and old clothes that cannot be sent to a charity shop, are not going to get handed down. So you can make a really lovely rug. Um, yeah, and it's been really great. She's taken it with her again, as I say, so uh, obviously it's a win with her too. Anyway, so that's the first thing that I've been up to these last couple of weeks. Um, I am wearing my ranunculus um, top by Cafe Knit Midori, and uh, it's starting in the UK now to get, it's quite nice in the day, but in the evening the temperature drops, so it's great to be able to get out these these short sleeve projects. I really, really love it. So I'm looking forward to wearing it a little bit more, um, but projects wise. So last week I had, um, not last week, but last podcast, I had cast on the Novelli tea by um, Caitlin Hunter, Hoyland Networks. So that is this project. And I'm really pleased with the results. So I've been, attacking it with some force. Uh, this time of year for me work-wise is lots of planning and lots of um, chatting through projects and ideas so it's a little bit more um, easy to work from home and work round things. So I've made quite a bit of progress. Um, this is all from Stash, all from Stash, Polish the Halo. And here we go. So this is where I've got so far. Da -da -da. So I have, um, I've finished the back, so I've finished all the short row shaping for the back. I've just got to the point now on the front where I'm doing the ribbing and the, and we'll begin the short row shaping for the front because they're pretty much the same. And then you join up for the shoulders. Um, and then you add the armholes. I'm not entirely sure how to do that, I haven't got that far yet. But I have really, really enjoyed doing the pattern. Um, I think it says to do it on a 3.25. I have gone up a needle size because I just wasn't getting um, the right gauge at the beginning. So I was a good girl, I didn't plow on. I went back, I took everything back. I think I 
got halfway through the colour work. But yeah, I took everything back and um, started again on a bigger, bigger needle and it's much better. I've pretty much hit gauge, even though the gauge in the pattern is obviously after blocking, colour work and after blocking. And oh, that gets on my nerves a bit because oh, it's such a faff then to do a proper swatch. So I tend to kind of, fingers crossed, do my colour work, have a little measure and kind of think, yeah, I can I can block that out a little bit more. It'll settle down a little bit more. And as it's an oversized um, sweater anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm quite happy if it's a little bit bigger than it's supposed to be because it is oversized anyway. I think you can go from three up to ten inches of positive ease. So plenty of room for error. Um, yes, what was I going to say? I can't remember. So yeah, 3.5 millimetre needle, I think I've been doing that on, and oh yes. I didn't see that you're supposed to change back to the ribbing needles for, there's a little bit of section of ribbing on the shoulders. I didn't see that bit, I was too busy pushing ahead, pushing ahead, so I've done the ribbing for the shoulders on the same needle as the body. But I think it'll be alright. And actually, I didn't want it to cinch in too much. The edge, the um, ribbing on the edge, it kind of flips up a little bit, so I'm hoping I'll be able to block that down, or I might add a little bit of ribbing onto it. It's supposed to be a little bit cropped anyway. Um, but we'll see. It was literally at the end. I went back to see what I was supposed to do at the front. We've all done it, I hope. Um, and I had forgotten to change my needles, so I wasn't gonna pull that back. I was good at the beginning, but not so good now towards the end. So I've just ploughed on and maybe the the shoulders will be a little bit slouchy, I don't know, but I think it will be fine. It will be fine, fingers crossed. So yeah, so I'm really enjoying that one. I'm hoping that I can get that done by next week because I am heading away again, which I will tell you about later. Um, yeah, so I would like to be able to take that with me. So we shall see, hopefully. If, uh, if time plans are okay, I might be able to, to push through that one a little bit more. So I'm very happy with that project. I know a few people are doing it and I've seen some beautiful, beautiful um, colour combinations on Instagram and the like. So yeah, I'm looking forward to wearing that one. Um, so my second project, which I have been working on, is the uh, Rhinelust Shawl. Ooh, have I got the pattern? I think so. The Rhinelust Shawl by um, Melanie Berg. She does loads and loads of shawl patterns, as I'm sure you know, and this is one of them. So this is the pattern and the picture. Um, and as you can see, it's a lovely, lovely shawl pattern with sort of a wavy motif on the edge here. It's a combination of uh, the wave pattern and um, garter stitch. So where I am with that is here. I have made some, it doesn't look like I've made a lot of progress, but I have, I promise. So here we go, bring that in. So it's got a really, really lovely texture to it. I'm really enjoying the texture and the pattern is perfect for the yarn. I've said this before, I know, but it's an absolute joy. It's a real blues, light blues and whites. It's a real kind of surfy sort of feel to it. So I'm really enjoying the pattern and the yarn together. Um, so I've sort of just established now, can you see in this tiny little bit here? I've just established, now this is the garter bit. So the whole of the row is the, the lacy pattern and then you start adding these garter stitches at the end and that's what sort of forms the, the main body of the shawl. So that's great and it will be really, really effective, but the, the pattern repeats is a 22 row pattern repeat. So each one of these um, little sections is 22 rows and then each pattern here is 12, yeah, 12 stitches. So it's not one that you can put in your head and every two rows, every two rows you add one stitch. So this little section, this add-on section, is gonna take quite a while. So it's not one that you can put in your head. You have to have that chart, well I do anyway, I have to have that chart next to me to kind of uh, log where I'm going to check those um, pattern repeats and those stitch repeats. So, and I have to concentrate. So finding the time to get through those 22 rows and 
I did an extra uh, pattern repeat, so I did an extra section of 12. Um, so I've got eight repeats, 22 rows, 12 stitches, eight times. Um, so yeah, it is a slow, a slow burn. So I think this one is gonna take me a while, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the concentration of it. It's like that sometimes, isn't it? You like that focus, that um, uh, the absorption of it, and I'm really enjoying that. But it is going to be a slow boil, so you'll just have to bear with me. I don't think I'll be wearing it by the next podcast. But hopefully, once the autumn comes in, and it's sort of cottons and linens, it'll be cool but cosy. So I'm ploughing along with that. I really, really like the pattern. I really like the yarn. Again, from Stash. So, uh, it's, a, it's a slow burn, that one, but I do like the pattern very much indeed. Um, that one, the pattern was supposed to be on a 3.5, but I went down to a 3.25 because it just, it was a little bit too gappy. And because I wasn't doing it in wool, I knew the wool wouldn't plume and fill those gaps. So it's, it's nice to have that sense of texture, but it was just a little bit too open for me. So I went down the needle size, which is why I added another repeat of those 12 stitches, um, so that I would hopefully hit the same size as it was supposed to be. I've got plenty of that yarn, so I don't think, famous last words, I don't think I'll run out of the yarn, but um, yeah, I wanted it to be as big as possible. So uh, yeah, therefore I have another 12 stitches to incorporate into the pattern. Maybe I have to do some maths later on, we shall see, but I think, I think it should be okay. Um, so that is that one, so that's ticking along nicely. Uh, the next project I have is these Broken Seed Stitch socks, which have sort of been with me from the beginning of starting the podcast, actually. I don't know what has happened to my sock mojo at the moment, but I just cannot seem to get it back. Um, maybe when the weather gets a little cooler, um, maybe when I have less head space, when work gets busier at the beginning of term, you sort of need something that you can kind of whiz round and round and round. So maybe my sock mojo will come back then. But at the moment, I can't find it. Don't know where it is. But anyway, I digress. So this is the Broken Seed Stitch by Hannah. Let me check her name. Hannah Levaniemi, I believe her name is. It's on Ravelry. It's a free pattern. I will pop it all down in the, the box below. Um, but I have made some headway on it this week. See, I have. I really, really like the texture. It's um, the broken seed stitch is where you do one round a plain knit and the next round as a knit one, purl one, and then a plain knit and a purl one, knit one. So you're breaking that seed stitch you're breaking that rib pattern, so that's why it's called a seed stitch. I think it's also called a blackberry stitch, maybe? I can't remember. I'm sure you'll put me right in the comment below. Um, and you do the the knit row, the plain row, in a solid colour. And the, um, the knit one, purl one, or purl one, knit one, in a variegated colour. So you get that depth um, of texture, which I really, really like. Um, but the reason why I cracked on with this week, a strange little story, is that um, I was working for a company that do uh, voice recognition software. And they needed people to have a conversation for an hour with a stranger over the internet, not Skype, so just voices, um, about a certain topic that they would give you so that they could put all this stuff all this recordings into their voice recognition software uh, to make it more sensitive to make it um, recognize different accents and different voices things like that so I did four or five hours of that this week so this was the perfect opportunity to do something that didn't really take a great deal of concentration but took sitting down time I obviously had to be able to blather on to these absolute strangers about varied topics one of which was IT I mean that and sport I don't know that was a tricky conversation. The other person had to do a lot of work on that one, although I did ask lots of questions. Um, so yes, yeah, so it was a perfect time to make progress, finally. So I'm probably maybe halfway up the cuff now. Um, I haven't got any more of those planned though, sadly. So it's just back to 
the old willpower to try and to push through that sock pattern. Um, but yeah, so it is making progress. Uh, I hope I've got enough yarn. I think so. I seem to be playing yarn chicken all the time. But never mind, never mind. So I have made some progress there. So I'm sure you'll be very pleased with me. So yes, that's all I've got on the needles really at the moment. Um, everything else is going well. My camera just went off then, strangely. I hope it's okay. Yeah, I think it is okay. It'll be fine. Um, so yes, now it is time for Covered Corner. <laughs> So this week I have a couple of suggestions. These suggestions were made a couple of weeks ago, but um, as you'll see if, you've, if you watch my last podcast, I wasn't very well. I had a summer holiday and I really wasn't very well at all. So I kind of got out of the loop with Instagram and Ravelry and all the rest of it. So these suggestions are from a couple of weeks ago, but ooh, what nice suggestions they are. So uh, Welsh Tenor, hi. Uh, he suggests the spring cleaning shawl by Stephen West. Now, if you know Stephen West's work, you know that it is really, really colourful and um, exotic and crazy patterns, crazy stitches, all mixed together to create some beautiful um, jumpers, shawls, projects, really lovely. So he suggests, which is a great stash buster, I've had a little look at the pattern, the spring cleaning shawl. And it is, it's kind of small sections of lots of different colours and textures. So it's a perfect title, I have to say. Um, so maybe next spring, I can keep that one in mind, in mind, tuck away all the bits and pieces that are left over. I think it's a four ply, mainly a four ply, and crack on with that. It's, it's a really nice little project. And I don't know about you, but I find um, that I end up using lots and lots of the same color you're kind of drawn to certain colours. So while Stephen West's patterns uh, are often quite random colours or seemingly random colours, um, if I did it, I think if I was working from my stash bits and bobs, it would probably be kind of quite fady, you know, quite um, a uh, set of colours that complement each other quite well. So that might be quite nice to look at, maybe even over the Christmas holidays, excuse me. You know, when you need something quite mindless, but um, as you're kind of trying to negotiate families and events, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, do have a look at that one. I'll pop a picture here, obviously. Um, and then the other suggestion I had, who, which was from Cardigan Fan, who is busy, busy, busy knitting, beautiful things, um, is Like a Cloud by Hohi Locatelli. And that is a lovely pattern too. I will put a picture here. Ooh, you see the problem with this whole covered corner thing where you suggest stuff that you might not have time to do or that's really caught your eye, that you really like, but you maybe haven't got the yarn for at the moment. It just makes my queue longer, my list of favourites longer. So after a year of doing all these bits and bobs, I might find that that list is longer and longer and longer and the joy of Ravelry maybe becomes less joyful when you just have a list as long as your arm of all these different projects that you want to do. But that again, thank you so much for the suggestions. Really lovely projects there. So hopefully some of you will have a little crack on at that. Um, and if you want to make some suggestions, then you can do the hashtag Covered Corner either on Instagram or on Ravelry. Ravelry, we have a Calon Yarns Ravelry group. Um, so pop along there. There's a few different threads, but one of them is Covered Corner um, and one of them is an introduction thread, etc, etc. So if you want to um, engage with the whole Calon Yarns podcast thing, then pop along there. And I am Calon Yarns on Instagram and Facebook and all the places. So do feel free to drop me a line with any project suggestions or any comments about the projects I'm doing or the podcast in general, that sort of thing. So thank you for those suggestions. I really do appreciate them. Um, yeah, so I hope you uh, I hope you crack on with this project soon and uh, seeing your posts on Instagram, both very busy knitters and crocheters and the, the little animals, the toft animals that Welsh Tanner does are just glorious. Um, so check them out. Um, so what else? Hmm, that's sort of it, I think, for the whole what's on the needles, knitting, crochet. No stash acquisitions, I've been very good. Um, but I was mentioning last time that I am thinking of casting on the, um, the flea cardigan. Um, and 
I've got the yarn for it. I bought the yarn for it at the beginning of the year. Uh, it's a steaking project. So I think what I'm going to do is I've got quite a bit of leftover bits and bobs of very yesticky, yesticky, rusticky yarn. So I think I'm probably going to do a, um, I've seen quite a pe few people do them lately on Instagram. I might do a sample, sample circle uh, with a steak and have a go at that because I think I just want to know that I have the bravery and the confidence to cut through my knitting. And if I've done a big cardigan project, I want to know that the steak stitches make sense, that my crochet up the, the sides to um, secure those steak stitches are going to work. So I think I might um, engage in a sample section of that before I actually cast on the project. To excuse me, I'm very dry today. It's very warm here actually, it's really close. We're supposed to have really grim weather over the weekend. So uh, it might be stormy, I think. Because it certainly feels quite close. So yes, steaking. Anybody got any uh, suggestions? Foolproof steaking uh, help would be good. There's a few great tutorials out there, I know. I've seen quite a few. Um, but yeah, if you've got any practical advice, then do drop me a line. So I think that's going to be my next thing to cast on. Um, yeah, so that's about it, I think, for the knitting uh, section. If you're going to hang on and just catch up with what I've been up to and what I'm going to be up to, then that would be lovely. But if not, thank you so much for watching. Please do the old like and subscribe thing. That would be really great. I would really, really appreciate that. But yeah, if you're hanging around, um, what's happening next? So next week, I am going to... Uh, Vancouver and then to Eugene and then to in America and then to um, Los Angeles for work So I am very excited. I'm, I'm sort of you know Kind of do that thing and go. Yeah, you know, I'm going to Canada and America. It's really cool Whatever, you know, it's just with work but actually inside I'm like that. Oh my goodness <laughs> um, So I've been checking out so many yarn shops and trying to work out what to take with me. I think I've never gone that far before, like that amount of traveling on a plane for that amount of time. So I think if I can take my needles on board, <gasps> oh, I never even thought about that. Will it be okay? Those of you that do that whole long haul thing. I think wooden needles are okay, aren't they? I don't know. Let me know, comment below. Um, so I'm hoping that I can take the, um, the Rhinelust shawl by Melanie Berg because once you zone into that chart, nothing else exists. So I think that might be perfect for um, being on an aeroplane for quite some time. I think it's eight hours, is it eight or nine hours to Canada, to Vancouver? Um, so that's going to be a project I take with me. I will take my broken siege stitch socks um, because that'll probably be a bit of hanging around airport knitting between meetings knitting. Um, and I might have to forego my yarn diet especially if I'm in Vancouver. Um, I watch and love Wet Coast Walls podcast. The shop looks glorious, so I'm definitely making a trip there to see what lovely things they have. So hopefully I'll be able to do a little bit of a vlog from there. I must pop them an email and see if that's going to be okay. Um, so yeah, I know there'll be a few yarn shops in Vancouver. I don't have a great deal of time. I think I might have a day and a half, maybe two days between um, meetings and events. So I need to work out my plan of attack to get to yarn shops and see what they've got going on there. So hopefully I'll be able to do a little bit of a, a sneaky stash acquisition that is allowed, I think, because I'm going such a long way and who knows if I'll ever get back there again. So it would be, it would be shameful and wrong to um, not purchase something beautiful. So yeah, so these next couple of days is about packing, sorting, that sort of thing. Do you do that where you've got like little piles of clothes that you might take? You don't want to wear because you don't have to wash them again before you go. Um, but you need things to match because you need a bit of a micro wardrobe. Um, and because I've got meetings, I have to kind of look sort of presentable at certain times. But it's going to be quite hot in Los Angeles, but not so hot in Vancouver. What an exhausting process it all is. Um, but it's cool. I'm very excited. So yeah, so packing will be the next thing. And then, because we're over there for about two weeks, um, 
My son is going back to his new university house before we go. So we have to pack him up over the weekend and remove him from the house mm. to insert him into a different house. So yeah, and you know, once they've been home, if you've been through this, once they've been home from uni for a few weeks, there's stuff everywhere. So uh, oh, if we have the opportunity to gather everything up, I will be very, very surprised. He's not too far away though. So when we get back, if he does need anything more, we can pop that down to him. Um, so yes, we took all my daughter's stuff to her new university house last week to settle her stuff in um, but she's got a job over the summer so she's come back to Cardiff to continue doing that so <coughs> excuse me she will be here while we're away and then when we get back uh, we'll take her down to, to uni for ready for the, the term and the following day I start my term proper so uh, yeah it's gonna be very busy the other side so you know that thing where you try and get as much sorted before you go um, so that it's not too much of a headache and a, and a frantic craziness when you get back, when you've got to kind of think of getting your head in the game for work again. Um, so yeah, I'm so excited. And it's weird because I've done quite a bit of travelling through Europe and there's language barriers there, isn't there? But it's quite chill. But I'm quite nervous actually about going that far, about going to, to Vancouver, Vancouver and LA and I don't know why I think it's just the distance you go oh that's really far that's really far now that's not you know that's not a couple of hours over the water that's a long way but of course there is no language barrier so it'll be fine um but if anybody's got any cultural tips and hints of of how to like tipping things like that we do it over here but it, you know you've really got to do it haven't you in America um otherwise people get quite cross but so that whole world is it the same in Vancouver I don't know. Help me. Help me, people. Help me fit in. Um, so, yes, that is the next phase. So we go next week. So I will probably, I will, probably won't podcast. Podcast? Maybe. I probably won't podcast until I get back. But I hope to. I'll be taking my camera. So hopefully um, I'll remember to record some footage and um, some nice bits and bobs so I can show you all where I've been. But lots and lots of meetings at um, university, our university partners and hopefully new university partners. So it'll be fun to meet um, those uh, institutions and those new students and new tutors. So that will be very exciting and hopefully do a bit of sightseeing on the way. Um, so I think that's about it, really. Uh, yeah, a busy couple of weeks ahead. Um, I hope you've got some nice things planned over the next couple of weeks. Those of you that have taken your summer holidays already, I hope you had a lovely time. But if you are heading out, chill, relax pack wisely projects now not clothes whatever um and uh yeah have a nice little break and i will catch up with you all in a couple of weeks so as i say please do like and subscribe if you like what you see and you can do the bell thing and it'll let you know when i post stuff up um have a look at the crochet rug vlog if you're interested in using up some scraps of fabric and as i say Apologies for the lacklustre last time podcast, but I am definitely a lot better now. Um, so thank you for sticking with me and I will catch up with you again soon. Um, take care. Hoi now. Bye.